There's a gentleman right outside of Henrietta, Texas that I've looked up to for a long time. I've seen him at different events, different cuttings and bull ridings as well, and different churches. Uh, Joe Howard Williamson, cowboy preacher, professional cutter, and a stock contractor. To be able to go to his place and pick his brain about you know, his ranch, the cutting, and his faith is going to be pretty interesting. I believe it was around 1986 or 87, uh, my dad, Stanley Williamson, and my brother, Burt Williamson, and myself, we bought this place. And uh, it, had, it was a place owned by a prominent ranching family here in, in this area, uh, the Metters. And uh, we were able to uh, purchase the place. And uh, uh, we named it the Switch House Ranch because there's a train track that came through it. Out here, uh, north and west, there was a big set of cattle pens, and that's where the trains would stop. They'd take on water out of an old uh, earthen tank out there, and uh, they would load cattle there, and you know they would connect to other places, and gosh, they'd haul them all over the country, you know. We, we run about 1,200 cows here in Archer County, and uh, we uh, do everything a horseback, and uh, we ship cattle two different times a year. Uh, the brand 66, that question's been asked me a lot of times how we came up with that brand. And my dad and another good cowboy from uh, here in Archer County, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. His name was Howard Lyles. And he and Daddy were real, real good friends and they had a cattle business together for uh, several years. But when they dissolved the business, we took the brand that they used and it was 66. And as I look back in old history books, over a hundred years ago, the man that had this place, his name was Luke Wilson. In fact, he built the house that I live in. And uh, uh, lo and behold, oh, that was his brand, 66. So it was kind of a, kind of a neat deal to see that uh, uh, unbeknown, we carried on that brand. Good, good. You're getting the hang of it. Good. They're John David, he's from uh, South Carolina. And um, uh, Matt, he's from South Carolina and, and uh, he's my wife's son. And uh, they both have ridden a lot, uh, but they came over here this week they want to learn more about the Western way. And um, they loved horses. They loved to ride. Uh, they wanted to learn to rope. And they're beginning to learn to rope. As you see, they're down there now practicing. And uh, they're roping the bale of hay or the dummy. And, and uh, they're sticking with it. You know, you don't want to cheat that on there. You know, you don't want to sling it across there and make it go in there. You want that loop to come down just like this. You want it to come right down over them horns. And they'll be going to uh, our Bible and Cutting Horse Camp, the Greg and Whitney Welch Bible and Cutting Horse Camp. It starts next Sunday at Weatherford at Jerry Durant's uh, place he calls Silverado. And they'll be going there and uh, I'm just spending time with them. Spending time uh, talking to them. Uh, spending time trying to teach them, uh, spending time teaching them how to saddle, unsaddle, tie horses, the basic things, and uh, they're really like a sponge. You know, it's just really a, really a blessing to get to have the opportunity to get, get to know a couple of young boys like this, and, and that's kind of what, what we do. 
And they'll be going on their first cattle drive today, too. Uh -oh, be a, you guys already got your horses it'll saddled be, up? It'll be a short one, but it'll be their first one. Yeah, buddy. How many roads at? Ready. There you go. What do we got to do to get the uh, saddle good. up and ready to go? We're pretty well ready. You got one I can borrow? Yes, sir, I do. You can ride that stud there. He'll be done with him in a minute and ride oh, him. I got you. Yeah. You don't have to cut them in half right here. There you go. Get your back cinch. Hey, this is the saddle I used last time. Get your back cinch down here. here. There you go. All right, boy. That back it might be important if he stops real hard. Mm-hmm. Keep that saddle sit down. Is this your first first cow catching today? Cow catch? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, well, one of the great advantages to way that I've learned, uh, as I said, from Buster and, and lots of other people uh, how to handle cattle is, is I think your cattle uh, don't fret near as much when you handle them. Um, as I told you earlier, um, our cows are all taught to hold up in the middle of the pasture. If we needed, if we didn't want to even take them to the to the pens and we wanted to brand, we could circle up and hold them right there and drag the calves out of the cows and brand right there in the pasture if we wanted to. And uh, we've, we've worked at that. And uh, me being in the cutting horse business um, has helped that a bunch because a lot of the cows that are just about all of the cows that's come to this place, I've worked them right out there in that pen on my horses. And of course, you know, that makes them good and gentle and gets them where you can handle them. And, and uh, uh, we do everything, um, like I said, uh, uh, in a way that we think allows our cows to have an enjoyable experience while they're in the pens, or the best that you can. It makes it a great experience every day you go work. You know, if you want to go work and, you, and, and we're branding, it's, it's, the cattle are relatively, most of the time, very easy to, to pen and handle in the, in the, in the pens. And uh, you don't have to have as much help and uh, you know it, everything just works better. It just works better. It I think it's the way the Lord intended for them to be worked, and that's that's the way we do it. And uh, I know there's people that do it other ways, and that's great, and it works for them. But this is what appears to work for me. I've been here almost 20 years, and uh, um, I tell you what, well, a little over 20 years, I guess. And um, we have very few days when we go work that things don't go right. Uh, everything always works good. Um, obviously, I've got good men that help me, and, um, and I say that with capital letters. They're good men, and um, uh, boy, they, they come to work, and they come to help, and they're conscientious, and uh, you know, as I found out in life about everything, you can't do it without good help. I've always been raised around a farm, ranch, and, and of course, we used to run lots of cattle up in up in the northern part of Wichita County, and they were small places, and they were Bramer Cross cows, and uh, at that particular time in my life, there was a lot of other things going on that wasn't so good, and, uh, but I just didn't handle cattle right or anything, you know, and, uh, um, and I was rodeoing, I roped calves and bulldog, and I showed paint horses for years. I love the paint horse people, and, and uh, they, they are an intricate part of my life, uh, too, as well as the NCHA, people uh, but you know 
I just figured there was a better way to do it. Down no, that's the way I like it. <laughs> oh, boy. I think it's a star. <laughs> we all here, huh? Yes, sir. Well, Father, thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for this food. We're very, very aware there are many people around the world this morning that uh, don't have anything to eat or nowhere to sleep. We lift them up to you this morning. We ask you to bless them and to provide for them as only you can do. We thank you how you provide for us. Thank you for friends. Thank you for family. Thank you, Lord, uh, most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ who died and rose again for us. And we thank you, Lord, uh, for the hands that prepared this food this morning. We ask your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's people say it. Amen. Amen. All right. You know, when I was in junior high, I was probably like a lot of kids. I was just out doing this and that and everything. And one summer when I was in junior high, I got to drinking. And uh, uh, loved the way it made me feel. I drank quite a bit all through high school. When I went off to college, I drank bad and got married the first time. And, had trouble in my marriage because of my drinking and drug use and that stuff. And uh, she was, Lord took her home in a car wreck. Just broke my heart. And I was uh, so ashamed of the way I'd lived and everything. And my alcoholism and drug addiction was just ruling my life. I finally got to the point where I just didn't know what else to do. And I, I went back to church, I heard the gospel and my mom and dad had been faithful taking me to church when I was young and in the high school, and so I knew where to go. And I went and I heard the gospel and really contemplated if that's what I needed to do, give my life to the Lord. Um, I went to a treatment center for drugs and alcohol and uh, quit drinking and drugging, but I still didn't have any peace. In 1988, I made a decision to trust Christ as my Savior. and. Uh, in 1990, I went to Africa for the first time on a mission trip with First Baptist Church of Wichita Falls. And um, while I was over there, we were just street witnessing, just a terrific experience. And uh, while I was over there, one of the men from First Baptist of Wichita Falls, Mr. Harold Warren, asked me if I would uh, uh, be interested in studying the Bible with him on a weekly basis and I accepted. And after um, about two or three years of him discipling me, uh, a series of events, uh, it's too long to go into, but a, a prominent youth minister in, from uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Dawson McAllister called me. And he had a vision of doing a horse ministry uh, within the whole horse industry, basically, is kind of what his vision was. And uh, uh, he was really, really um, uh, important in showing me that God wanted to use me in a different capacity. Dawson McAllister helped us put a ministry together. Dawson thought that I should go into schools and speak. He thought I should be involved in the prison ministry, and he thought obviously the long, over the long haul I needed to be involved in the cutting horse industry. And it has just um, uh, been a wonderful experience, one I wouldn't take for. Um, uh, 
Uh, it hadn't always been easy, uh, but I can't visualize life without it. Several years ago, a real good friend of mine, a guy that helped me in the cutting a whole lot too, who taught me really how to win, his name was Jim Lee. And uh, Jim passed away and, and uh, I did his funeral. And um, Leanne Hart, JW's wife, sang at the funeral. And uh, boy, I thought, golly, man, she can sing. I want to get her to sing at some of my church services at Fort Worth during the big National Cutting Horse Association events. So I called, uh, called them one day and JW answered the phone. And I said, JW, this is Joe Howard Williamson. He says, yeah, you know how he talks, you know, what do you want, you know? And I, and I told him, you know, and, and uh, so anyway, she came and sang for us a time or two. And she said, you know, said, I've heard you preach, Joe Howard. said, we need to get Todd to let you preach at some of those PBR deals that he can't get to or something. Todd talked to me one time. I think he couldn't come to uh, Springfield or Oklahoma City, one of those, I can't remember. But anyway, I went and uh, I preached and, and uh, boy, I just had a great time. I guess we must have had 300 people that morning. You know, it was a big one, it was really good. In 1994, when we formed the Ministry of Horsemen for Christ, I knew that it was very important. I'd already been showing cutting horses and had some success, but I knew it was important for me to, to uh, be quote unquote a winner. But I knew that if I could get competitive and be good at it, I knew that it would give me a platform to share the Lord with a lot of people. I'm a non-pro. I mean, you can train your own horses, but you can't train other people's horses. And I bought a horse through Brady Bowen at Jacksboro, Texas, jigging little Lena. And I started hauling that horse in 1996. I made the top 15 in 96, 97, and ended up third in 1998. And in 1999, I decided to really go at it. Ministry was growing. Uh, people were uh, responding to the Lord. And uh, so I just, I hit the trail and I stayed on it. Ended up winning the world for the first time in 1999. Um, I kept going, I, I, I made the finals in 2000, uh, 2001, and it seems like it was 2002, I believe. Uh, I came across another real good horse and um, uh, Brady Bowen helped me with him and um, I won the world again. So it was a great time and, and uh, um, I won the world for the second time and I kind of thought I was probably, you know, that's about it, you know. But I kept going and I made the finals. I've made the finals every year since 96. And, uh, but in 2000, I believe it was 2006, I came across another good horse and Robert Rust found this horse for me. And um, uh, he was an instant choice gildan and um, I hit the trail again and, and did real good and won the world that year too. Come on up, up, drive him up, both feet. Just kind of a, a general rundown of the way cutting is judged and, and what judges look for is, they look for a horse that, that stops straight, that has obviously a lot of interest in the cow and, and a horse that maybe puts its ears up when it sees a cow and, and the expression. And, and just the eye appeal has a lot to do with how many points that you do mark. And they mark, the judges have a range from 60 to 80 points. And there are penalties in there that can take points away. And there are things you can do like eye appeal or a cow that really tries your horse and he holds it real pretty and real confidently. That, that is something that's going to add to your score. It's gonna be credits and how you cut your cattle when you drive up out of that herd, how, much, how clean and smooth you cut that cow. That, that's the, the credit earning cut, they call it. And that helps your score too, a lot. But as the rider yourself, maybe some things we ought to talk about a little bit is, is when you put your hand down, when you cut that cow and you put your hand down, it's gotta be still. Because if you get to moving it, they're going to get you a point every time you move it. Good job. Real good for your first time. If you drive up and you look committed to a cow, to a certain cow, and uh, you decide to cut another cow, that's just like a cow getting away from you, that's five points. 
And then obviously, as I just said, if you're working a cow and, and the cow gets by you and gets back to the herd, that's five points. You have what you call the back fence. It's the area where the cattle are standing and a little bit to each side of them, it's marked. If a cow gets to that area, that's called a back fence, that's three points. Also, when you're working the cow, if the cow um, turns away from you, you can quit that cow, that's a legal quit. Or if the cow is standing in any position with all four feet on the ground, that's a legal quit. Wait, all the way. All right, quit, right there. You take a trained cutting horse, you kind of have to adapt to the way they do things. You can't change four or five years of training to fit you. Fit you. you have to train, you have to uh, train your mind and your body to, to ride and do things the way that they do it. Go. See, you got that better stop. Just relax. Get there. Get there. Both feet. Woo. Find your rear end. Right here. Quip. Yeah. Now. Good. Yes, sir. Good. You cut three cows. You got them held. You probably did pretty good right there. Probably did pretty good. I, yeah. did, I still need lots of uh, yeah, practice and coaching. Yeah, but you did good. good and he worked good, good for ride. you. Oh, yeah. And that yeah. cow started pressing you. Look at that mark over where you stopped. Well, I hope they got that on film. Yeah, they got it. <laughs>